Yeah. Oh God. Oh, that's a bit of hay fever, mate. That's a bit of hay fever. Hello and welcome. So you should, you should be getting push notified through the app. We had a bug in the JSA, which meant I think the app was crashing when too many people were joining the lives. I tried going live into the Facebook groups, but the issue with that is you have to uh, go live with your, sorry, it's a duck with a neck. Uh, you have to go live with your personal profile. And the times I went live with my personal one, it just, no one got notified. So I just sat there in silence. So feel free to log in, ask your questions, do whatever you want. Uh, I'm afraid I'm going to be wrestling with a uh, very active Kelpie. Um, so yeah, apologies, some radio silence. I've actually been quite quiet on all socials, been working on some uh, bigger YouTube products and just, just been just been slammed. But before I help you guys, I actually need you guys to help me. So one thing, as I'm sure you're aware, is since we started doing challenges in 2017, every personal trainer now wants to do uh, some form of challenge, right? It's got to the point now that I can't stand the word challenge. So I want to rebrand it. I want to do the same thing. Basically, what I want to do is turn the challenges into less of a challenge and more like a 12-week training phase, a 12-week transformation phase, a 12-week training block. Because that's really what it is. It's like a it's just a training phase. It's a three-month block, probably with two workouts. Uh, where you could probably see a good few kilograms lost, centimeters down, inches down, or you can make some real tangible strength increases. And I kind of, on the front end, just want to rebrand it, but I need cool names. So if any of you have got any cool names that we could use for that, because we're going to start promoting the next one soon. And I just, the word challenge just kills me, just kills me. Right, I'm just going to double check the audio is okay through my phone. And we'll get into it. Well, that sounds, that sounds kind of crispy, kind of crispy. All right. Asad Khan, who is in your team? Um, good folks are applying the app. So the way the uh, business works, uh, James and I, other James, we own the gym, uh, own the gym, where we actually uh, rent the gym. We have the business together, partners, and then we hire the developers uh, who are in Ukraine. Uh, then the Pretty much everything after that is the coaches. Now the coaches, oi, mate. The coaches do a lot of the heavy lifting. I like to think they get paid well. Um, but yeah, so the coaches have all got their own businesses and their own lives, which is why sometimes you will get a response from a different coach. And that is for two reasons. One, so they can live their life and work with their clients and spend time with their family, but also to keep your costs down. If we assigned uh, one coach to one person, it would cost more. So, you know, it's pretty obvious that a lot of the platforms out there, they charge like a couple hundred pounds a month. We kind of want to maintain what the JSA about is keeping the costs down. And do you know sometimes there can be issues with the coaches, but that's why we have the feedback score and everything else in there. So we can squish that as quick as we can. Shashir, any tips on building consistency after a long injury layoff and getting completely unfit and detained? It's not consistency you need. It's just a reactivation, isn't it? If you just get back into a routine and start going back to the gym, that's half your problem's gone. You know, when you go back to the gym after an injury, you've just got to ask yourself, um, cool, what can I do now? It's not where you were before, it's what can you do now? And if you can see what you can do now and just take that and look to improve it, you'll be fine. Uh, Dylan, does creatine actually affect your livers and kidneys? Do you not need to drink loads more water while on it not to damage liver and kidneys? No, it doesn't damage. It doesn't damage those things. You think that you produce it anyway, and it's found in red meat. Um, I'm not sure uh, who's telling you, you it damages your liver and kidneys, but yeah, your requirements for water might be a little bit higher, but you're not talking a huge deal. And any of you that uh, are into the new tonic, we've restocked it in the USA, or we're in the process of, and um, we're, so I'll be honest with you with this. So we, Amazon, we want to get good reviews on Amazon so you can get it into retail. Because then, basically, when Sainsbury's, Tesco's, all of that, look at your Amazon, they want to look at your reviews. And if you've got like 5,000 five-star reviews, they know it's going to sell. So we sent 
like 80% of our stock to Amazon, 20% to the website. Then Amazon sold out. So the next batch we sent um, 95% of our stock to Amazon. Then Amazon put our prices up. They don't notify you. They just literally message you, go, yo, uh, <laughs> you got 200,000 cans here. We now are charging seven quid more. So you're like, cheers. So we're now in a production run making loads more and we're going to keep them on the website and the website's going to have the old cost on so it's going to be that 24.99 things like 28 pounds on amazon that wasn't us we're not getting that money by the way that's not it's not us <clears throat> pete tick pete i see you 100k subscribers having a competition with my wife and who can get a six pack first trying to get body fat down from 15 percent. what's the best weekly routine to achieve this without totally giving up muscle growth uh, well, you will have to give up muscle growth. Uh, so think of it this way. The body is in two states, either anabolism or catabolism. It's either getting bigger or it's getting smaller. You're either getting muscle or you're losing muscle. So like, if you wanted to lose fat and build muscle, although it's possible, it's recomp, which is a bit more infuriating, a bit more slower, a bit more difficult. If your priority was getting a six pack, you would be happy losing muscle because you kind of have to account for that. Now, this is, this is an interesting one, right? Now, I'm not going to tell you how to live your life, but your wife and you losing weight, you, you could feel good on a six-pack, but it's very unlikely she will. Women have a higher body fat percentage than men. Women uh, need more fat on their body to survive pregnancy. Men burn calories quicker than women. There's a whole myriad of kind of issues here. Just be careful that your, your wife doesn't get caught up into like a negative loop here because what happens if she, what happens if she accomplishes the six-pack and she has to... You know, I'm, I'm just throwing this out there as a precaution. This is my duty of care. What if your wife, like many women, has to develop a small eating disorder to accomplish a six-pack? And that sounds like really extreme, but that's just the reality of the situation because it is so difficult for so many women to get that uh, lean. Um, sometimes they do have to develop an eating disorder to do that. So then what happens if after she has the six-pack and loses it, she then doesn't like her body now compared to how it was that time that you both got really, really lean. And then, you know, run, run a half marathon. You know what I mean? You and your wife, who can run a half marathon quickest? I think you've got like a better playing field, more positive uh, habits aiming towards the goal. You know, there's less re restricting and periods of hunger. And what marriage gets better when both of them are starving. You know, I'm not going to teach you how to live your life, but just some considerations. Like a six pack is not to be idealized like many people do it. There's plenty of people working in the gulag in North Korea with six packs, mate. You know what I mean? So yeah, just, yeah. Asad, just join the app with a subscription. Look forward to it. Welcome. Uh, Yoshi, just signed up. Look forward to different workouts and plans to follow. Welcome. Jesse, Call each block different things, the phoenix, the butterfly, things that change of transformation. That's a bit cheesy, right? I could I could assume maybe you're from America. Um, okay. Jay, just join, struggling to stick to my calories. Any tips? Okay, so let's imagine here's where you were before. This is the amount of calories you've been set. Can you find a middle ground? You know, in the onset, it's just about hearing. You could even increase your calories, right? <clears throat> maybe, <clears throat> maybe to begin with, you just hit maintenance calories. You know what I mean? Maybe that's the goal, to eat maintenance calories. But if you're struggling, just put calories up. Stephen Dalton. I'm overwhelmed with the choice in terms of apps. All I want is a good app to use at the gym while I build my strength and get more defined. Will your app do this for me? Simpler the better. There are quite a lot. Uh, the majority of apps out there are something called White Label. We've been fortunate to have a massive member base. So we've built our app from scratch over the last four or five years. Um, yeah, if you wanted to use... Uh, James Smith Academy, you, one of your best bets could be the starter plan, which is £10 a month. For any of you that are on this, I'll be honest with you. So you can get a program-only rotation for £10 a month. If you've been a previous pre, uh, premium member, it's £5 a month. And it's called the bridging. So we have distinguished those two together. If you just wanted to write your own workouts, we have another sister app called Mentor, MNTR. Um, we're in the process of bringing that live where you could um, just do your own thing. And that would be a free app to use. And the good thing about Mentor is you can then uh, write programs for your friends, your mother, your sister, your partner. You can send it to them using the link. Uh, we're building a function so personal trainers can use that. But yeah, if you need coaching support or someone to do your program, 100% check out uh, James Smith Academy. 
Um, how long should one stick to a certain deficit? See if it works for weight loss. Weight loss. Maybe a couple of weeks, maybe a week or two. The deficits that we have in the academy aren't massive. Excuse me, mate. What are you doing? So, uh, yeah, you, you should feel if not, if nothing's changed after a few weeks, then definitely have a look. Okay. Um, how about 12 week progression? None of these, my marketing hat, none, none of these are getting my marketing part to tingle. Uh, Shashir, what are your thoughts on hit style workouts one to two times a week to help build endurance VO2 max? If you want to build endurance of VO2 max, I'll probably say do something that's probably a little bit less uh, impactful on the joints, right? So hit workouts do beat up the body a bit because where you bring the, the types of equipment you have down, the complexity of the workouts, you know, burpees are not particularly easy on the body. Neither is impact. If you look at athletes that want to do their endurance and VO2 max, they'll do it on like a, a dyno, an air bike, a ski erg, a rowing machine. You know, they'll use certain equipment for it or they'll use running, bikes, things like that. Um, so I don't really like hit style workouts. If you like to do them, that's cool. But for the majority of people, one, they don't sustain it or enjoy it. But if you wanted to build your endurance VO2 max, I think there are, I think there are more pleasurable ways of doing it. I went for a run last night. You know, I like going for a run, clear the head, get some air in. But what I don't like doing is doing burpees in my fucking front room. Also, the thing I don't like about HIIT workouts, especially when they're done at home, it's very important. You have spaces. That's the office. You work in there. All right, don't watch movies in the office. That's not what the office is for. There's the kitchen. You prep food and you eat in there. Here's the front room. Don't eat in the front room. Front room's for relaxing. That's it's a bit of chocolate, right? You have your rooms. I don't like the idea of doing exercise in a room I relax in. I just don't. I think it'd be better to go outside. The moment you step outside, tie your laces, boom, it's go time. Anna, where have you and Tay met? I'm sorry if it's too personal. Just ignore. Uh, she replied to one of my stories in 2021. And she had a, a blue tick because she played AFL netball. So I, I was like, who's this with the blue tick? Clicked on it, athlete, athlete. So I was like, oof. So like many, 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 many women in 2020 and 2021, many women, I said, hey, come meet me for a swim in the sea. That was my thing. I stopped drinking in 2021. Um, if any of you have been to my live shows, you'll know why. And what I used to do is I used to just meet people for a swim. You know, one, if it was winter and they're like, oh, it's a bit cold, red flag. Uh, um, didn't want to get their hair wet in the sea, uh, you know, like, and then we just got on from there. Obviously, had a few hiccups, like getting locked out of Australia. On the odd occasion, whey protein shakes make me feel sluggish and give me a heavy head. Any reason? Probably just quite difficult for your body to digest it, especially if you're like most people that might do a double scoop. Digestion is taxing. Do you feel the same after you have meat? Uh, Name-wise, what about not a 12-week challenge? We kind of rinsed that with not a diet book. I don't think, I think that also went over a lot of people's heads. Is there a way to lose weight while gaining muscle? Uh, always here, you can't do both. It's either one or the other. Again, we kind of have these two stages of anabolism and catabolism. So if you wanted to gain muscle without losing fat, we want to make sure you're not consuming too many calories. And if you're not consuming too many calories, you're going to slightly limit muscle growth. This is kind of why bodybuilders have always had bulks and cuts, but um, it's also why bodybuilders will use testosterone, right? Because anabolic steroids are going to help you with that process. Um, you can, but it's just going to probably take a little bit longer. Uh, all right, here we go. Pete, it cost me 500 quid if she does it first, so I need to win. So you guys got a set of better challenges. You, something I reckon a run would be your next one. Get a six pack, you'll be like, oh, is that it? I'm 60, I'm really trying to get fit and strong again. I was late forties last time I was fit and looked okay with my shirt off. Results are coming slowly, but I want your opinion. What's possible and older, Stephen? Again, probably at sixty, I'll get your bloods done. I'd have a look at your testosterone. I would, you know, maybe even look to a HRT clinic. Probably get a little bit of the the good stuff. So you know, same reason I say the same to women. I'm one in a thousand below thirty, one in a hundred below forty. The rest around fifty menopause. Reproductive hormones are tantamount to performance, well-being, composition. Um, so yeah. Callum, congrats on the little one on the way. Thank you. Just joined the home program today. Started, really enjoyed it. Thank you. Luke, I'm subscribed to your app. Um, 
doing it to get swole. Any particular reason it is push and pull in the same session as they're doing the old push day, pull day. Yeah, just to make it, you know, you, d- you don't need to just focus on one area of the body. We want to create inflammation in different areas. Push, pull as well. Agonist, antagonist. So like they don't conflict with each other. So the same reason upper, lower, you could do push, pull legs, whatever. But there's never really a reason for anyone that's not assisted to be doing a whole day of just legs or a whole day of just pull or a whole day of just push. Um, yeah. So I think it's me. I do a bit of push, bit of pull, bit of legs on most days. But yeah. They, they don't conflict with each other. You know, doing rows between doing bench press isn't going to make your bench press weaker. If anything, right, there's another way you can look at this. Um, think of it this way. So let's say we are supersetting push and pull. I'm doing dumbbell bench press. With every dumbbell bench press, I should be eliciting a stretch. So I'm getting, I'm opening my chest, I'm getting a nice wide stretch, then I'm pressing. Then that stretch, let's say that's loosening or lengthening my pecs. When I next go into a row, it's going to give me a l- larger range of motion that I could potentially row because I've then elongated my pecs. So I could be benefiting my rows by doing pecs and benefiting my pecs by doing rows. Not to mention the activation in your back muscles is only going to help you when you're at the bottom of a bench press. So yeah, I'm a big advocate of that. Um, recently joined your app. Amazing. Thank you. Been on many other platforms that just pushed it workouts. It's the only app that has given me consistent going to the gym. Thanks to the amazing plans and coaches. So forget the coaches. Do you know what? There, there have been times, there have been times that, um, I wish we'd sold hit or wish we'd sold PDFs because like our model, and we've had this before any business guru that I've sat down with in the last five years, they're like, why, why have you got coaches? And I'm like, I'm, it's, it's expensive. It bleeds. When you think of that, we don't charge a huge amount. We've got 10 pound a month, 40 pound a month, 150 pound for four months. Um, but it's because we honestly believe that having coaches and a program and the ability to change stuff is actually what you need. Um, coaches are incredible. We wouldn't have a business without them. I complain about their cost, but it's all right. See some of their pay slips. Some of them get paid more than us sometimes. But um, yeah, it would be, this is the way you got to reverse engineer it. If we wanted to make the most money without giving them, giving a shit about our clients, we'd probably do hit. You know, some people have done made huge amounts of success. So I've I've got a mortgage on my house, right? We do hit training, bastards. Millions. All right, here we go. Rating the difficulty of an exercise on the app. Is that for individual review? When you, would you increase the reps, kilograms? What is better, reps or kg increase? The app is incredible. Thank you. So. This is more so so that when you're doing the end of a set, you know when it's time to progress. Now, the progressions could be kilograms, it could be reps, but then again, it depends. So let's say you're squatting 60 kg. If you add 2.5 kg or 5 kg, that's great. Um, that would be a better increase than adding an extra rep. Because think of it this way, Roz. If you're doing back squats, if you do one more rep at 60 kg, that's another 60 kilograms of volume. But if you're doing that for like six reps and you add five kg to let's say two two and a half kg each side, you've then got uh, you know six times five, which is thirty kilograms more volume. So that two and a half kg plate is actually less of a progression than adding an extra rep. Does that make sense? We'll get into the maths now. Either way, both I support both increases, but there comes points where uh, adding more weight is easier than adding an extra rep. But adding an extra rep is a lot easier because you don't have to rest between sets. But both of a viable means of progressive overload. Jesse, it's a really good program. Been using it over a year. Do recommend it. It's on my fourth challenge. The community makes it that much better. Legend. Legend. Oh, Samuel. Lost 17 kilograms over the last two years, wanting to build muscle now, but afraid to put on fat. Mentally hard to eat more. It's lean bulk possible. How do I factor this into the calories the JSA app suggests? So if you've lost fat, you've been in a deficit. This is what you need. You've been down here. We're not asking you to go up here. We're just asking you to come here. So I think it goes to your maintenance. And I know you're worried about gaining fat, but if you were to gain fat, let's say I was wrong, very easy to lose it again because you've done so much of it so far. So instead, raise your calories towards maintenance, see what happens. Because I guarantee, chances are, you're probably just going to feel better. You're probably just going to feel better. You're going to be like, wow, this is all right. You're going to see probably an upregulation in metabolism because you've got more calories. I very much doubt weight gain will be the first thing that happens. So give that a go. But yeah, I don't think it's something to worry about. Yeah, yeah. Hey, mate, when trying to gain muscle, it's usually difficult to be the exact same set surplus. So my question, shall I focus to aim for slightly above or below the surplus? 
For muscle growth, I'd go slightly above. Make sure your calories and your protein are hit, sleep, everything like that. Muscle growth is an arduous and difficult task. And unfortunately, the majority of people that we look at as pinnacles of physiques are not doing it naturally. I nearly made a video, right, the other day. You know the guy that plays Reacher, Alan Richardson? He's a dreamy bloke. Good looking guy, family man. But the guy got swole for Reacher. Let me show you a picture. Let me show you a picture. <clears throat> I'm still not sure if I'm going to do this video. But where would it be? It'd be in my screenshots. Here he is. Old Swoldemort himself. See this guy. Now, I love the fact this guy's open about being on testosterone. But like, not only has he, has he got a dreamy physique to begin with and great genetics, he then goes on testosterone and his career. It's like, this is, the, this is the issue that we have now. It can make you feel stupid for wanting to gain muscle naturally. You know what I mean? It, and that's the issue that I, I have. But yeah, like in the app, and it's awesome that the coaches reach out, they ask questions, don't assume anything, love it. Yeah, the coaches are awesome. I'll be, we'll be fucked with that one. Another thing, cardio after weightlifting for muscle gain, bad for gain, I'd usually do 20 minutes after every workout. If you like doing it, absolutely. Um, just make sure you're not doing too much that you kind of burn yourself out. You can't recover from it. LR, £10 a month. Weight, I pay £99 for three. So there you're on the quarterly, you're on the premium. So you have coaching with that membership. £10 a month is the starter plan. So if you, at any point, if you wanted to go down to program only, you'd pay £5 a month because you're a previous member. So in essence, um, yeah, the option is there. The quarterly is fantastic, but that's the ability to talk to a coach all the time. I'm saying for some people that don't want the coaching side of things, they don't want to talk or interact with anyone, we do have the more affordable memberships. Lee, just signed up. Biggest problem at the moment is not having a clue how to select the right weight for the exercise and plan when I go to the gym. Any advice? It'll be the first time. First time that you go, you're like, right, you're just guessing. You grab the 20s. You're like, well, way too easy. Grab the 40s. You're like, oh, that's too hard. And grab the 30s. You go, boom, that's it. Make a note. So the first time, you just got to figure it out. So like today, my first set of bench that I'll be doing in about an hour is three by five. <clears throat> I've got three by five on bench press and my RPE is six, seven, eight. So I've got to go and just bench and I'm like, is that a six? No, add weight, add weight. Yeah, that's a six. Find seven, cool, add seven, etc. So yeah, you just got to kind of figure it out. Donna was pretty fit six, seven years ago, now hitting 60 and working 12 of our shifts, including nights, good old NHS, plus thinking about becoming a PT. Your thoughts much appreciated. Um, so like, <clears throat> sorry, I don't know, uh, I got COVID. <clears throat> Look, it's difficult. I'm sure the NHS really needs you. But what would be worth looking at is how much could you charge if you're a PT? And how many hours a day would you be willing to work? Because if you wanted to work a six hour shift as a PT, charging 30 pound an hour, if you're going to earn more money than working in the NHS and have more of a life, you should do it. Because if you want to, if you, this is if you want to be a PT, and it's very difficult as well. You know, even though you're doing 12 hour shifts, you kind of turn up, people present themselves, you're qualified, you got to do what you got to do. Your problems will just change if you become a PT. Because you get to the gym, you might have an empty diary and then you've got six hours of just talking to people and trying to get them to buy your services. So I'm, I'd say if you can, if you're confident that there's a market and that you can tap into it and you can make money and you could do less hours and earn more, 100%. But if not, yeah, I don't, I don't know what the working conditions like in the NHS. Um, if it's winter, why is it a red flag? Because the water's cold, right? Imagine this is why, Dovey. In winter in Sydney, water's freezing. Even better for a reason to go swimming in it, right? So if someone's afraid of a bit of cold water, don't want that. You want someone who's afraid of cold water that gets in it. Because many of life's challenges are exactly that, challenging. That you should be facing challenges head on. If someone goes, I'm not doing something that will make me feel better because it will be uncomfortable for a short period of time. 
It's a problem. That's why I think most women are attracted to muscular men because of exactly the reason that men would have to work hard. Be uh, You'd have to be <clears throat> organized. You'd have to be persevering, persevering it. You'd have to have grit mentality. You'd have to be, you'd, so many things that would come with training. Same reason as like, I think a guy that has his own business is attractive to women as well because they go, oh, he's organized, he cares, he's thinking about the future, he's making short-term decisions with long-term um, life in mind. You know what I mean? Uh, Joseph, you can do a collab with Vladislava Galligan. Uh, she actually asked if I wanted to do an MMA one, but I'm in Sydney, she's in Dubai. Um, but yeah, I think she's cool. Ada, thank you for your app. Thanks to your app and your amazing coaches. I've dropped eight pounds last month. Amazing, keep it up. Um, oh, I've just lost. Here we go. Tried to contact you via Instagram. I'm your deaf fan in the comments. Amazing. But I won't see it on Instagram. If you need me, you can email me. James at jamesethacademy.com. I'll see it there. Bianca Spiteri. How did your injury stepping back from training affect you mentally? I've had a rough few weeks, tried to stay consistent, feel my mind cups. Yeah, do you know what? I replaced my training with work. So I had a very, very productive few weeks, but it was just, it was shit. I couldn't even go up and down the stairs for a few days. Couldn't walk the dog for like a week. Um, but it happens, didn't it? I've been training hard for six years. Something was willing to pop. Um, yeah, and tore my MCL. But I'm back to, I was back to my normal life within two weeks, training after seven weeks. I messaged my uh, coach and just said, look, Give me more volume, upper body. Let's get whomped. New to the app, loving it. Looking forward to the next 12 weeks. Welcome, Robert. Uh, Tyler, how much weight loss uh, until you need to recalculate your deficit? It depends when it stops working. It's going to be different for every person. How much cardio do you recommend during muscle building programs? Some for cardiovascular health, but I wouldn't have it as a priority. Because if you're weight training hard, your cardiovascular system is having to work as well. Don't forget that. Not as much as a run or anything, but Sometimes your body might need that energy to build muscle. Lee, morning. I have to do my workout straight out of bed at the gym at 4 a.m. What is a good food to eat my body I can use during my workout? 4 a.m., you'll be fine if you haven't eaten. It's probably not been that long since you last ate. You know, maybe fuel the recovery of that workout as a priority rather than actually fueling it. I'd just have caffeine if I was to wake up at 4. To optimize results, is it extremely beneficial to count calories in the appropriate app that works with JSA Health App? or follow the workouts, eat relatively wholesome meals that give decent results. If I was you, I'd try both, see what works best. The majority of people, when they start tracking, they actually get a bit of freedom from it. It's crazy, right? We've all kind of been brainwashed. Oh, tracking's bad, it'll give you an eating disorder. But for a lot of people, it's just like managing the accounts book of their calories. Is it true that one needs to rest three minutes between sets to build muscle and also six to eight reps instead of 12-ish? Uh, no. If you were doing like strength sets, if say in your program you had like heavy bench or heavy squats and it was like one to seven reps, I'd say probably take three minutes if the numbers are important. But when it comes to building muscle, probably nothing less than a minute because you want to recover. But, you know, think of it this way. When building muscle, something that we don't talk about enough is something called effective reps. So let's say you're doing any exercise. You know when you get to the end of the set and you're struggling, and you're like, oh my God, and you see the reps start to slow down and your body start to shake, that's an effective rep. And it is effective reps, which elicit probably the best response that we need for muscle growth, right? So when you're there, that's an effective rep. So it's not like your body goes, oh, eight reps, let's build muscle. So my question to you is, it's not about six to eight reps. It's not about 12 reps. It's about how many reps you need to do to get an effective rep. Because if the weight's too light, you could be at 20, 21, 22, 23, then 27, 28. That's an inefficient way to get to effective reps. But then if you go too heavy, it'd be like one, two, three. You've probably only got one effective rep. So the reason we have rep ranges is to try and find a beautiful spot where we can maximize the amount of effective reps, where you might get five reps shaking like a shitting dog. Uh, thanks. Not something I know about. Do you have tutorials on bloods and testosterone or would you do some time, please? I'm not qualified to do this, Stephen, but what I'd say is um, order a blood test online, go to a pathology clinic. Um, I do mine privately. They cost me like 75 pounds. Then I get my bloods done. I then have a look at, um, you have like 
your total testosterone, you have your sex binding, sex binding globulin, SHBG. Um, and you can even look at other things like follicle stim stimulating hormone, luteinizing hormones. So you can look at the communication between your brain and your testicles. You can look at your testicle output. You can look at your testosterone. Then, you know, you could look at things accordingly. There could be things like a supplementation that you might want to do to free up some more of your testosterone. But really, you, you could talk to a, a male performance clinic. I'm currently going through a bit of a journey at the moment, uh, which I won't get into with my own blood work. It's probably just life. For the last year, just like, even, even as far as June last year, I was like, I need to get my blood done. It's like something's not up. And there's like a few markers in there that on the whole, I'm healthy. Don't worry. Not like I've got anything bad, but I've just, I think age, I think I'm just getting older. And also just stress, dog, dog mortgage, ruin my bloods. Like imagine this, I know I'm definitely oversharing here. I've never had debt my whole life. Never had debt. My dad said to me, don't get a credit card. So I got my first credit card, like 29. And do you know how many times I missed the payment on that credit card? Never. So then you get a house, you get a mortgage. And like, I can afford it. That's the problem. But I hate the looming idea of debt. So then I'll put the pressure on of paying it off within a few years. And then you're like, why? Why? Because then if you earn good money from a project, there's me just like, let's pay off the mortgage. Then you're like, but then are you trying to pay something off to make yourself happy? But then you're not doing things to make yourself happy. The idea of a holiday, I suddenly can't just enjoy a holiday. I'm like, oh, that could have been money to pay off the mortgage. So I don't know. I don't know if there's something wrong in my bloods that's making me stressed or something stressed that's ruining my bloods. I don't know. But it's good that I've done some things uh, to my lifestyle recently, probably just relaxed a bit more or tried to relax a bit, a bit more. And you can see literally like my markers in my bloods from improving and stuff like that. So now that I found like a good center nearby to get my bloods done, I'm probably going to get, get my bloods done every month now, try different supplementations, see what it does to my bloods. Um, because yeah, so there you go. Uh, my journey with James, watched his TikToks, loved them, signed up to emails, which is the only marketing email I read. Now led me to the app now on day four with the trial. Bush, welcome. What's your opinion about machines at the gym? Do you think that free weights are better? Okay. Here's an, sorry, Paul, I've just forgotten your question. Uh, I've gone past it. Imagine this. We spoke before just then about effective reps. Do you think it'd be easier or harder to use machines to get effective reps? It'd be easier. That's why bodybuilders love these machines, right? Because when you're failing, you don't even need to worry about where the weight is, whether or not it's in the right position over the shoulder and the mechanics of it. You've just got to push or you just got to pull. So the machines help you with that. However, let's say from a sport performance standpoint, if you're like a rugby player or you're a pitcher or whatever it is, sometimes you don't want to be fixed to just linear paths of movement. So for instance, for me, I'm, I'm not just pushing my opponents off in front, they're to the side or whatever. So for me, free weights and the movements that I get in my body could be more beneficial. They both have their pros and cons. Uh, Paula, nice to see you back. I'm nine weeks into JSA, absolutely loving everything about it. The coach is great and the app is the nuts. I've never been so consistent with anything before. Love to see it. Jude, doing my first consistent challenge, even though I started the challenge in like 2021, I think. Loving it. Legend. Uh, is it possible to open the app chat somewhere in a browser? Uh, I don't think so. I think it is app only. Uh, Sven is dotted. Would I be right in saying that's an Icelandic surname? Mel Corker. All right. James, how much are you missing the mats? Doing much outside. I'm back on the mats. I've been training back on the mats for about two weeks now. I even went back to training. My knee was still pretty fucked. Just kept it out of the way. Just let people guard past. Uh, Louise, is it normal to have one side stronger than the other? Oh, yeah. Oh, God, yeah. So even most dudes have got a bigger left pec because <clears throat> let's say uh, you're a right-handed dude, your left pec usually bigger because your right arm is usually stronger. Uh, these discrepancies are always there. I think in like sports exercise or sports exercise scientists, uh, have a low discrepancy of up to 10%. Try and work on it, sure. Jack, what part of Australia would you recommend? Aiming to move myself, move by myself, I'm very anxious. Well, this is a good thing, right? There's nothing to be anxious about. It's a big country, the weather's nice. The sky's usually blue, not today. Um, East Coast, I would definitely fly into the north, like Cairns, and travel down. Find somewhere you like. 
like I say, there's no reason to be anxious. Check it out. Have a look. If you don't like it, go back to what you're doing now. If you do like it, find somewhere to stay. Any days you haven't got any friends or anything to do, go to the beach, read a book. You know what I mean? It's, there's a lot of nature here. Some of that nature does try and get you. Just saw one of the uh, biggest funnel webs in history this week. It's a spider. Don't want to mess with funnel web. Angela, if I'm overweight to start with, is it best just doing a food calorie deficit first or a good start and exercise plan at the same time? I think they're both important. I think you should be doing both. Uh, even if it's just trying to hit a step count whilst putting yourself in a deficit. It's like, it's like a prong on each side. You want to be pulling the lever of exercise and calorie restriction for the best. Exercise will make you feel good, so we're restricting food after a few days. So, yeah. That exercise plan doesn't have to be a regimen that you follow. It just needs to be something. <clears throat> um, Louise, Adam Sullivan, what do you think of his advice? He comes up on my TikTok all the time with EBT. You know what? I used to, um, I had a problem with him at one point because some of his content was very similar to mine. Now I'm a bit older. We're speaking at an event in April together. I unblocked him, said hello. Uh, I'm interested to meet him in real life. He's done very well. He's done very well. I think he did like $16 million last year or something. So even if the guy has conveniently close content, I respect the hustle. You know, I don't see a lot of unhappy customers on the internet about him like he did with like, you know, Joe Wicks. So good on him. Uh, back on week two, I could only do press ups at an incline. You gave me tips. I managed to get 10 yesterday. No incline. Let's go, Amy. Oh, and another thing though. Adam Sullivan, if you're watching this, he got a G-Wagon and a Lamborghini Urus. Now, cool cars, don't get me wrong, but they're very similar. You know, two SUVs, pretty sure they both got twin-turbo V8 supercharged engines. I would have liked to have seen a little bit, you know, I don't. you got a two-car garage, G-Wagon, Urus, Nah, you have an SUV, then you have something else. Maybe, uh, you know, GT3, right? Maybe you go Rari, maybe not a McLaren to, you know, RS6, Urus, yes. Now we're talking. You know what I mean? They're two, this is the same. I keep getting smashed inside control, neon belly, heavy opponents and struggle creating distance when bridging. Help. Um, <clears throat> keep getting smashed inside control. Neon belly, heavy opponent, struggle creating distance when bridging. Um, right, James, if someone's passing on your right side, just try and get your knee into their hip. If they're, if they're, if you have elbow and knee connection, they can't pass. So this is like a really interesting jujitsu. If you're on your right side, if your right knee and your right elbow are touching, they can't pass. Keep your forearm wedged into one side of the hip, keep their knee into the other. And then you don't even need to bridge. You just need to keep your distance. Um, keep fishing for the underhook as they pass because they can't go to knee on belly or they can go to knee on belly. But even if they do go for knee on belly, pop away, wrestle up. Fuck them. Don't let them pass. Don't play guard. All right? If you're going to sit to play guard, get up and wrestle them. You know, put your forehead into their sternum. Give, a, give, a, give their ribs a bit of a... Watch them then. Also... Here's something, right? Human behavior. Sorry, I love jujitsu. If they come round to knee on belly, the second that knee touches your rib, get away, get up, and fuck them up. Anything you can. Just go dirty. Try and smother them. Even if it's a higher belt. Get them on their back. Get on top in mount. Smother them. Let them know. You know, like when a dog misbehaves, you've got to correct the dog within three seconds. Same. Your training partner tries anything, you correct them. There's a few guys that train in that have tried buggy choking me and they won't try and buggy choke me again because they got neon face from it. Um, your training partners are just like pets. They do anything you don't like, correct them. Even dirty tactics, wrist locks, whatever. Um, James, would you condone use of fat burners? Or they, no, no, they're just stimulants, mate. They're just stimulants. They're just stimulants. Um, neon belly is a terrible position to be in. It is. But if you can pop away from it, and turn in and scoop behind the leg, you should be into a position where you can wrestle up. Um, I don't know your level of flexibility, but if you tried shrimping to free up some room, base your knee on their hip, base your elbow. Connor's in. Connor's got the tips. 
I'm with 13 of training, but feel like a bit slump and lost motivation. Any advice or tips to get going again? Do you know what, Ross? I'd love to say, like, <clears throat> this is normal, mate. This is not this is your life, if I'm honest. This is your life. But the, the good thing is, right? There are some people that live feeling how you're feeling now. That's that's their mean, that's their medium. Everyone else that's tuning into this live, sitting here listening to me rant and ramble. We have high expectations so that when we do have slow weeks and slumps, we take it very personally, right? We, you're probably like, oh, fuck's it. It's good. Just imagine this. Even if I haven't trained weights in like six days, so I know what you're saying with this. That slump you should be grateful for because so many people go through life and they don't feel any depression when they don't train, right? The fact that it bothers you that you're not training is a pro. So take it. Just be grateful for that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it seems I can't get past a certain number of weight and reps. What shall I do to help me get past it? Shall I lower the weight, do more reps? Yeah, 100%. Whatever the lift is, send me a video of it. James at jamesacademy.com. That might help us out. Anything you recommend to balance out the left and the right? Uh, yeah, so say you're doing split squats. Do the weak leg first. Let's say you got 12 reps on split squats. Do your left leg first. If it can do 15, do 15. Then max, match that with the right leg. Then, um, yeah, just make sure that whatever movement you're doing, you max out the weak leg and just match the reps with the strong leg. Um, so, yeah. Would you ever recommend or do hydrox? I wouldn't, I wouldn't be against it. Don't really know much about it, if I'm honest. Uh, after realizing how calorific foods are, came back across TikToks, helped me down 22 kilograms down. Well done. How many months pregnant is your girlfriend now? Uh, well, we're due in June. So whatever that is in the months, uh, she might be like 20, 28 weeks. I don't know. That's her. That's her. She's, she's on top of the pregnancy. She's having her test now for gestational diabetes or whatever. I'm, I'm just there. When a woman's pregnant, She's in charge, all right? That's, I, I just do what I'm told. Could you please tell how it's possible that your girlfriend and some other gym girls having so low body fat and at the same time quite impressive muscles? Um, yeah, she'd be the first to tell you. Genetics. You know, genetics and ethos, I'd say. So my missus is very lean. Her dad is very lean. Her dad is 60, 61. He's got a six-pack. But also, it's not just like natural. I'll go to the gym in the afternoon. Her dad's just doing a 10K on the rowing machine at 61. So you've got this, this mixture of genetically gifted, but then the ethos of using those gifts, it drives her crazy that she can't run anymore. So again, if you want to if you want to have a great looking physique, pick better parents. You know it's a harsh reality, but we've just got to play what we can because we're all very, very different. And that's probably one of the reasons why I'm excited to procreate. My, my kid could actually be good at rugby like I wasn't. So yeah, I'll try it. I'm a white belt, three stripe. Thank you. Oh yeah. And by the way, if you're a white belt, um, a lot of your training partners are just going to try and frustrate you until you get tired. Uh, I've got a question for you, mate. I generally have on and off lower back pain. Are there any exercises you should avoid? Not really, not really, but you should probably see someone. You might have to go through 10 physios to find a good person. Um, but yeah, you try and get that sorted. Are you going to take a break when you become a father? No, no. I've got a mortgage to pay off, mate, right? So that I can live my life. And this kid ain't getting the house, right? He's not growing up to be spoiled, not having that. Thanks for replies. Found this whole live chat very interesting, motivational. Cool. Thank you very much. How would you train for Hydrox? I don't even know what it is. Just joined on the starter package. Thought I was fit because I could deadlift 75 kg. Tried to do a dumbbell press and twist for my program. Humbled me. Legend. What's your opinion on pre workout powder? Good if you're training in the first part of the day and if you like it. Um, all right. Yes, you got Iceland on your team. I thought so. I've been to Iceland. I've been to Reykjavik. I don't think I'm going to be allowed back. But that's for another live altogether. Guys, thank you very much for tuning in. It's been a pleasure, never a chore. I will see you soon on the lives now that the app is working again.